Hello everyone and welcome to episode 81 of the Cherry Heart podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a crafty podcast featuring crochet and knitting and some sewing etc. Um, you can find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk um, Oh, I was going so well, wasn't I? I had a nice flow going now, and now it's gone. Um, just need to click the podcast tab at the top, that's what I was going to say. Um, you can also find me elsewhere on the web as Cherry Heart, and I'm on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT. Um, so how are you? Hello! Welcome back. Welcome back in this lovely new year. Um... Happy New Year to you. Happy 2020 to you. Um, did you have a nice Christmas or a nice break? I hope so. We did. We had a lovely break. Um, yeah, we had everyone, I think I don't spoke about this before, but we had everyone here for Christmas and um, yeah, it was good. It all went nice and smoothly, which was good and lots of other visiting people and doing bits and bobs and keeping busy and yeah it's good to be back I've got lots to share I don't think I even brought everything up just because there's a lot of stuff and you know don't want to hear about it all we'll be here forever won't we and that's no good I think I'll start with a, just a little bit of news and that's to do with the nature's walk blanket um, so if you've watched the podcast before, you've very probably heard about this because I talked about it a lot, especially at the end of last year when the crochet along was going on. Um, that's all finished now, as you probably know. I'm just doing a quick recap in case you're not returning. Maybe you're new. If you are, it's a blanket. We did a crochet along last year. Um, if you want to find out more about it, it's all on the blog. I'll put it in my show notes. As well as being on my blog, I'll link the show notes below. So I will put a link to the page in those show notes. So if you want to find out about it or you like the look of it, it's all there. Um, so yes, yeah, so just the final sort of little element of the Nature's Walk story, if you like, is that now that the crochet long is all finished, um, I'm able to release the extra bonus squares. So while the crochet long was on, there's a free pattern for a complete blanket that's available to anyone you can just use that and you'll make a lovely blanket I'll just I'll show you the free version so this is as just a sample of the free version and what that will look like made up obviously the actual pattern is for a bigger blanket of 48 squares I think I've only got 12 in here so that's how the free blanket pattern works up um, and then I also released, for anyone that um, actually brought a yarn pack, um, I put some extra square designs in there just as a sort of a thank you for buying a yarn pack kind of thing. Um, and I'll show you a sample of that. This is the version with the extra square designs. So that, as you can see, it sort of looks very similar at first glance. So the whole, the basic structure of it is the same, which was kind of the point. You know, I wanted them, I wanted the actual blanket to be the same no matter what pattern you were following um, but there's ex these sort of different square designs they're all unique on this one because there's 12 designs in this one there's six designs on this one so this one's got some repeats in it um, obviously when you make the blanket in the full size you'll have to repeat all the designs I just make that clear because I, I thought I was getting confusing for a minute there but yeah so in this one all these 12 squares are all completely different designs so those six extra ones um, are as I say they're free if you buy yarn packs there's three different yarn packs two you've seen and there's the other one over here um, but again it's if you haven't seen this before it is all on the website so I don't want to go on too long and, and bore the other people <laughs> but um, Yes, yeah, so if you were interested in using one of these yarn packs, they're still available on Black Sheep Walls. Um, and you can get a yarn pack, so you'll have your yarn and you'll have all the, the, obviously you can download the free pattern anyway. And you can add those bonus squares in. 
but if you didn't want to use a yarn pack then um oh and the links for all the yarn packs are also on that page by the way so if you go there you can see the examples of each of the three lovely colors and then you can link to them just so it's nice and easy for you to find um but yes if you didn't want to use a yarn pack for any reason um then now i've been able to release a separate pdf for sale with just those six designs in so you can just pop along um and i'll, I'll link the blog post where i've released it which i i um i got out yesterday Oh my goodness, this is coming to me so naturally after the break. Not. Um, <laughs> so yes, so you can you can now buy those six designs separately if you would like to, and I'll pop the link for that in the show notes as well. So people have been buying it already, so thank you ever so much um, if you have bought it. Um, yeah, it's very much appreciated. Um, I know some of you have been waiting for that to come out for quite a while because I had to wait until the crocheted long are completely finished and then obviously we were into Christmas so yes yeah, so I know you've been waiting patiently so thank you for being patient with me and um, thank you for uh, supporting me like this because you know as any sort of small self you know small business one person show knows it honestly it just means so much doesn't it it does Right, let's stop talking about that before I get tootsie moosh. Um, <laughs> right, so those are the blankets. Let me show you what I finished. I can't remember what I had spoke about before in the last podcast. So for sort of continuum, continuation, continu con continuity, some sort of continuing word. Um, I know I talked about these I can't even remember if I'd started them in all honesty but let's just plunge ahead anyway so these are my Christmas socks so this is I'm the gingerbread colorway from Mr B yarns and I got a coordinating mini also from Mr B I can't remember the name of that though it might have been cranberries but I'm not entirely sure yeah love this very much indeed um got these finished in time for christmas so there's i guess they're the kind of my advent socks i made them in the run-up in that sort of first uh, up to christmas kind of time and i did get them done in time for christmas because i wanted to make sure i could wear them and then i ended up not wearing them because it was it was actually pretty warm and uh was sort of running around doing things all the time and yeah but anyway they're gorgeous i love them i love how that yarn works up it's so pretty those speckles are just exquisite um yeah really nice i have actually worn these and these blockers are just a tiny bit smaller than my feet so it's looking a little bit baggy on the blocker but they fit perfectly um so what can i tell you about this not an awful lot it's just a vanilla sock pattern. It's pretty much um, how I do my vanilla socks that I've put in my pick and mix socks pattern. So it's just the two by two rib option, the vanilla pattern option, and I did the rounded toe option. And the heel, I did the short row heel, although actually this isn't the one in the pattern. This is Fish Lips Kiss Heel, because I seem to remember that even better off by heart than my own pattern which totally makes sense but yeah I would also recommend the fish lips kiss heel as well as well as my own pattern but I do I don't know I don't know if I think it's the best but it does it's easy I remember it I can do it without thinking about it and it does fit well so it's a kind of a go-to heel for me but yeah it's only a pound if you want to try it out. Oh, I say it's a pound, maybe it's a dollar. It is a small amount of money. I was just thinking, I don't know how much that works out because maybe it's a dollar, but then maybe if you're in, you're in Europe, you probably have to pay some sort of VAT on top of that. So goodness knows how much it works out as, but it is 
a very reasonable fee for it. Um, anyway, so that's those. I think we've discussed those long enough. And I also finished before Christmas. I had a little urge to make some more of my Twinkle Toe bed socks. Um, so this is my pattern again, actually. Um, I don't usually crochet socks. I haven't got any crochet sock patterns for proper socks, if this makes sense, because these are proper sort of day socks. You know, I'd wear these around the house, but I'd wear them to go out, you know, with my shoes or my boots, whatever. These ones are sort of thicker and more slouchy and less fitted. So these are just a sort of bed sock. I wouldn't, wouldn't wear these sort of with my shoes or anything. But yes, but I um, I have made these before, obviously, to come up with the pattern in the first place. It actually came from a stocking. I made a stripy socket stocking bigger than this, and um, that I wanted to put on my mantle. This was years ago, and a few people asked me the question, like, "Oh, well, would it work as a bed sock? You know, is it about the right size?" And I was like, and I thought about it. And I thought, well, it's not actually far off. So I kind of modified the heel so that it was a better fitting heel and just made sure the sizes were more for a person rather than just hanging, you know, a great long thing hanging on the mantelpiece. Um, you know, and the foot and the kind of circle round is a lot smaller than the stocking version. But yeah, but it works kind of really well as bed socks. They're really lovely little cosy, comforting things to put on. So, yes, they took very little time to make as well, very little time. Um, I used, what did I use? I used Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino from Stash. Um, I had a couple of balls of this blue colour, which I think is one of the only ones that I had a couple of balls of, so I kind of had to go with that for the main colour. But that's good because it's one of my favourites. And then I just thought that this dark grey went with it rather well. I don't know the actual colourways or colour names. I don't even know if they're still current. They're probably discontinued, to be honest. Um, I don't know. This is sort of stock I got um, years ago. So, But yes, they are cosy. I haven't actually worn those yet. It hasn't been that cold here. Um, I don't know what it's like with you. I mean, obviously there's terrible things going on around the world, isn't there? Sort of Australia and, God, it's just horrific. And, you know, with the fires there and then all the flooding in Jakarta, it's like horrific in a totally different way and it's just all awful. And, and here we're bumbling along and very lucky because our only, well, it's not even a problem, is it? But it's just been unreasonably unseasonably mild and not very chilly so I haven't really wanted to put my warm things on but yeah it's, we're lucky that we only get such a tiny effect of it being warmer not such devastating effects um yes right so that is those and I will wear them now I've shown them to you. Um, I also whipped up some more of Jules's lovely wondrous dishcloth. These are knitted. Um, I made one of these, I think. No, two. I've got a couple of these. Um, and I've been using them in my kitchen. And I love them. It's just fantastic. Yeah, and actually, I know this sounds a bit pathetic or possibly, no, I was going to say it sounds a bit weird or possibly pathetic, but it just makes, like, cleaning up stuff a bit more fun. Because, <laughs> you know, you've got, like, a, a pretty colourful thing to use and you're like, oh, yeah, that's nicer. And then I can sort of circle them round. I just stick them in when I'm washing something else so it's not using any extra, like, washing energy or water or whatever um 
yeah, it's good and, and it's reusable. So that's one of my sort of things for this year is to sort of find ways to be more reusing things more, using plastic less, you know, just generally trying to be less wasteful and more sustainable ways of living, you know, as I'm sure many are. And I've done some things up to now, you know, but there's loads more I could be doing. So, I'm, you know, it's one of my things for this year is I really need to focus on doing more. So anyway, to that end, I thought, since I'm enjoying sort of having the different colours out and swapping them around, I'll just have myself a little stash that I can cycle through. Um, again, this was yarn I had in stash, or it's some new yarn that I got sent and I can't talk about yet, but my goodness, it's gorgeous. So yes, so those are Jules, so sweet Violet, who of course you will know. Hello Jules, if you're watching. She is, you know, we all love our little jewels, don't we? She's the best. So yeah, that makes me happy. A little rainbow of dishcloths, very exciting. It's a way to make kitchen cleaning more exciting. Who would have thought that was possible? And then in the same vein, I also made some of my pine cone dishcloths as well. Or I just called them cloths because I'm actually using these ones in my bathroom, the cloths I made. I gave quite a lot of because um, I've got the face scrubbies with it as well. So I'm going to make, well, one thing at a time. I made these to go in my bathroom. I've got a couple of just the pattern, my pattern for these is just a single cloth. And I've made a couple of those for the bathroom, but most of them I've given away, so I might make a couple more. But actually, I might not need to now I've made these. But when Sam came in last year in one of my podcasts not the last one but the one before that when Sam came over and we podcast together she'd used the pattern to make some of these sort of bath mitts you see which I had sort of it crossed my mind oh that's something I could try but I never sort of really thought about it but she'd made them and oh she'd done such a good job they looked amazing and the yarn that she had was so gorgeous and they sort of faded in nicely in the pattern really really lovely so I wanted to give it a try and so I made these ones and I don't think they're quite as gorgeously gorgeous as hers because she'd used the uh what's it called Rico Ricarumi little cotton balls you know the little tiny 25 gram ones and she'd got some sort of um like mild effect ones and so she put some of those in as well and with the kind of colour changing and the mild ones it looked like a really graduated effect she got it was really pretty so I kind of tried to emulate that I did this one first quite like that and then I did this one um, which I changed the colour I think this I did did I do three rows and then this one I only did two rows so I thought I'd try sort of fading in and out but I think I prefer this one but yeah so quite simple, basically you make two cloths and stitch them together and I've stuck a little loop on. So you can just use these in the shower, fab, love these. Um, yeah, so again, this is in my new secret yarn that I can't talk about, Ugh, which is a shame because I can't wait to tell you about it because it's fab, it's like a new, it's gone straight to the top of my list, I love it, it's going to be a new favourite for sure. Um, so yes. I'm hoping maybe, well, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that another day. Let me sort out what I need to sort out first and then we'll come back to it. But yes, I quite like those. So that's good. And I think that's all I made before Christmas. Oh, I also made, uh, if, if you happen to follow me on Instagram, you would have seen I was crocheting up loads of little balls and I made them um, some Christmas gardens with them. I um once we got all the sort of decorations out this year the sort of the way I'd done the tree this year sort of the colors I'd picked out and used I didn't have anything that went on my mantle like I the colors just didn't seem to work right I've got like a really bright one which I really love but the sort of tree was much paler this year so 
it didn't go so I did a garland to go with that and then the bright one the, which is just discs and at the time when I made it quite a few years ago I thought I could do crochet circles but oh my goodness that would take me ages won't it I can't be bothered that seems a bit fiddly and awkward um, but since then I've changed my mind and I love making these little balls so I thought oh, I'm going to make a proper ball version of my sort of flat disc garden so I mean I'll still use the other one but it'll probably be renegated to not a mantelpiece one it'll be another one <laughs> so yeah so I made that as well I'll just pop a couple of pictures in because they're all packed away with the Christmas decorations now so I didn't remember to bring them to show you I think I'm getting a request from the young Bertram. I don't know if you can hear him. Hello. Have you cottoned on to the fact I'm podcasting and you want to see everyone? Is that what it is? Hmm? Well, don't ignore them then. You came up, say hello. So, no, I blank you. Oh, silly boy. Just want some cuddles, don't you? Um, yes, yeah, so that's what I finished. I don't know if there's any... Oh, yes, there was something else. What good timing. Yeah, you didn't want me to forget, did you? I made a Christmas dash hound. <laughs> Again, I'll have to put a picture in because I, um, I packed him away with the Christmas things. But yeah, just, I saw on Instagram just before Christmas, um... Oh my goodness, words. I think someone might have tagged me in actually to it, but it was a little crocheted, you know, anigurumi dash hound with a little Christmas tree on his back, sort of strapped onto his back. And um, I might have to put the name of the person who made it up. Actually, no, I talked about this in my last podcast, didn't I? So I've shown you all this and I've seen it. Did I... I hadn't made it by then, had I? I'm pretty sure I hadn't made it. I think I just said I wanted to. Oh my God, if I had a memory. I'm going to guess that I just said that I wanted to make it and I hadn't got very far. That's what I'm going to guess. But I'll put all the links in show notes. So there's a person who actually made the pattern, uh, sorry, who made the dash hound with the tree on it. And, but they use someone else's pattern, so I'll link to the someone else's pattern as well. But the pattern is just for the dog. It's not for the tree or anything like that. She'd sort of, you know, come up with that idea herself and added it herself. So I tried to recreate her idea. So, yeah, total credit to those two and not to me. I just, uh, cop you know, <laughs> copied their idea, I guess, or recreated what I'd seen because I just loved it so much. But yeah, I'll pop a picture of my one in here so you can see how he came out. My little Bertie with the tree. Yeah, that was a nice little make before Christmas as well. Quite fiddly. But then Anigurumi almost always is, isn't it? And also the sort of pattern, I modified the pattern quite a bit. I, basically, I looked at the person who... I don't know her name, that's annoying, isn't it? Oh, my brain is useless, but I looked at the person who'd made the sort of dog with the tree and she said she'd modified the pattern so I kind of followed not what she did because she hadn't got her modifications but I kind of followed what it looked like to try and get the same look that she had and I sort of changed quite a few bits of the pattern oh and also actually I made notes that was what I was going to tell you as well I made notes of like the modifications that I made and I also made sort of little notes of like how I did the tree and I did pop them on my Ravelry project page for that project. Um, so if you wanted to know what I did, I did type all my notes up and they are in there if you would like it. It's not like a properly written pattern. I can't sort of guarantee that it's perfect or anything, you know, or that it's very wordy or... <laughs> but, you know, if you wanted a brief sort of note to look at as a kind of guide, then yeah, I did make a note of that, so if you're interested, probably not now, why would you want to make a dash out on a Christmas with a Christmas tree on it in January? <laughs> but it is there if you're interested. Right, so those are the things I made. Let's move on to what I'm doing now, otherwise we'll be here all week. Um what should we talk about first, Bert? Should we keep on with the doggy theme? Because I've got this look. 
Oh, his little dashy bag. So this was a present actually from my lovely, can you see it on there? From my lovely Amelia in America, Mila's Sweet Makes. She's on Etsy. Um, I have spoken about her a couple of times before. She makes bags. She very kindly gifted me this one. And isn't it just the most perfectly perfect? Ah, oh. yeah, that one on the scooter. Love him. I love them all. Anyway. What I have in here are my birthday socks, um, which are these. Can't show you things with this arm now because Bert's, it's Bertie's pillow. There we go. That wire, get out of the way, wire. There we go. That's better. So this yarn is a self-striping yarn and it is by the lovely Debbie and I'm just saying that and frantically thinking my goodness that is the right name isn't it? I think so. Um, from Down Sheepy Lane. So here it is. I, I spoke about this with Sam as well because that was just after we went to the yarn festival in Nottingham was it? Nottingham yarn festival? Yeah. So this was one of the things I got, so I said about it then. So if you've been here before, you probably know about this. But yes, I actually thought it was three colourways. I thought it was the mint, the grey and the pink. But I didn't realise that actually there's a pink and a peach. It's quite subtle. I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera. Well, I started these in the evening and I was merrily knitting away. I thought, oh, it's like a thicker band of the pink. That's lovely. I couldn't actually tell in sort of like the evening light, but then in the day, I was like, oh no, they are two different colours. It's just so beautiful. Oh my goodness. I can't tell you how much I love these colours. So good. So, so good. Oh, and I've put my heel in. I've gone with the Fish Lips Kiss heel. Um, actually, my favourite, favourite heels are Heel Flap and Gusset because then it doesn't stretch the sock over your foot arch so much but when it's self-striping I really don't want to mess with those beautiful regular stripes so fish lips kiss short row heel it is so yeah I um, found a grey that I had in stash and kind of matched as best I could it's a bit lighter as you can see it's funny because when I was matching it it looked practically identical but once you get it wound up and actually knit it in it is quite a bit lighter it's good yes so those are my birthday socks that i started <laughs> on my birthday and they're just my favorites um and i also have started some wrist warmers if you have been here a while, you'll know how socks and wrist warmers, <laughs> hands and feet warmth is obviously very important to me <laughs> because I make a lot of these things. So these are my wrist warmers, that's the top actually. Sorry about the needle scraping. Um, so I've just gone for a tube. I actually had a pattern in mind for these. Again, this is yarn that I got from Nottingham when I went for Sam. This is from the Wool Barn. From lovely Maya at the Wool Barn and it's her Cash Merino sock I believe. I haven't got the bands because I haven't put this been organised enough to put this in a project bag. I haven't sorted myself out or got myself straight after Christmas yet really. So it's sort of Christmas to New Year you don't do anything do you just visiting and that sort of thing. Then it's New Year then it was my birthday and then now we're back and I sort of got to get on top of things again and I'm not yet. Um, yes anyway so I had a pattern in mind so I went and brought this with a view to making these. I started the pattern of actually these are the fourth time I've started these. I don't know if I went wrong or what I did. Anyway whatever I can't remember but basically I did it made it up as the sort of pattern was there's like a um, in the pattern this bit folds in and you would sew that in, which I can still do that bit actually, to sort of get like a thicker cuff bit. And then in the pattern you would put like a thumb hole in there, so just like um, 
a slit somehow, not sort of, there's no kind of gusset for it. So it'd just be a line where you cast off and then you've got to cast on more stitches. So I did all that, but I just didn't really like this thicker cuff, in fact. I just really liked, sorry, the needles are scraping. Let's see if we can balance them in this yarn while I talk to you. I just really liked this sort of little simple, you know, it's probably going to roll a bit, but I just really liked the look of that at the top. And I ended up not liking, it felt quite thick on your hand as well. So if your sort of thumb holds there, the folded over bit is there. I don't know. I, you know, I knew that's what the pattern was. And I thought it was exactly what I wanted. But then when I made it, I wasn't sure it was anymore. But, you know, I could still fold that in and tuck it in and have that thicker cuff. But, um, yes. So I started again and I kind of left the thumb hole out because I don't use the thumb holes. I just generally have them up kind of as far as my thumb and then so that I can scooch them back, you know, like I get a loo and because I wear them around the house, I get a loo, I want to wash my hands, I want to scooch them up so I can wash my hands, I don't want to keep taking them off and putting them on again or, you know, you just sort of wash something up quickly. Got to take them off again, no. So I just think these are just more practical for me, like this. And then I want them to be really nice and long, so I've just started a few increases. Again, that's not in the pattern either. I think it just says knit, keep knitting for however long and then stop. Oh, that was the reason I restarted as well. It, in the pattern it also writes, so basically I'm not following the pattern anymore. It also writes away so that you can have jogless jog, so that you don't see this little jump where the colour changes or you know where the sort of new row starts so you can see on mine there is a little the jog is still there where the stripe comes round but I tried the jogless jog and it did you know fish in terms of the colours lining up worked perfectly in terms of you being at a sea that there's sort of something going on anyway I wasn't happy with it because you can kind of, I don't know if you can see because the lines kind of arrest your eye more, but it actually, unless you get the yarn at exactly the right tension, it will sort of tend to sort of pull up a bit and sort of pucker ever so slightly. And I think my tension doing the jogless jog wasn't great. So it was puckering up the stitches slightly. And because when you do that, the seam moves around. So my seam, which started there, as I'd done the colour changes, was starting to travel across like this. And I thought, if I can see it and it's going around like this, there's more chance you're going to see it. So like this, I've got, you know, you can see that there's a jog there and it's not perfect. There's like a seam, if you like. But I can just put that sort of to the back and I won't really see it. And then all the other, <laughs> you know, unless I look at that angle, I'm not going to see it. Most of the time I'm just going to be looking at this part of my arm and I'll never see. Whereas if it's travelling around, it's inevitably going to come round to my arm at some point. So I I just went for this instead. It's probably if I persevered and practised more and got the technique down better, I'm sure it would work really well. I think it's me, not the technique, that's at fault here. But yeah. But as it was... I just thought I'd go with this, I think. So yeah, so basically I've just knitted a tube and sort of abandoned that pattern, but you know, this sort of thin stripe with thick stripe mixture is, is from the pattern. That's all that remains of it, really. So I don't know how long I'll keep going. I think I'll basically keep going until I've used up half of that and then I'll make another one. Um, I will link to the pattern though, in case you're interested in that. I can't remember what it's called or who it's by because I'm useless. I'll put that down here. I will also put a link in show notes um, so that you know and the yarn I told you, so that's okay. Um, and then the only other couple of things I have to talk about is some incoming goodies and also some, I do a little bit of I guess bullet journal chat and just sort of end of year -y kind of been reflecting a lot at the end of last year on things and 
sort of there's some changes for me this year as well. I need to cut my fringe, don't I? Um, yeah, there's some changes going on this year for me as well, and it's sort of really going to affect the kind of amount of time I've got to spend um, during the day on Cherry Heart stuff, basically, because, you know, that's what takes up most of my days. So, yeah, I don't know what that will be like. It's going to be interesting. Um, cause obviously, I won't be able to do as much as I was doing before, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know quite what I'll be able to still fit in. Um, hopefully, you know, I still want to keep pop podcasting and, well, I don't blog a lot as it is, but, you know, what I do do, I want to keep that up and all that kind of thing. But I just mean almost behind the scenes stuff, I suppose, just sort of, you know, pattern writing, how much time I'll have for that and sort of messages and commissions and things. I've kind of thought, well, I'll, you know, I'll take a rest from commissions basically I'm, I've just realized I've started talking about this already haven't I I've, I've gone into my next category before I've done incoming goodies but yes anyway we'll come to that but it's all of that kind of stuff just a little bit about you know what I put in my bullet journal and goals and stuff so I put that at the end in case you can sort of duck out if that's not of interest to you um, and again with incoming goodies not everyone's interested in that um, and I've only brought very few to show you, and it's only Christmas presents, really. Um, I have brought something, one thing, for birthday, though, um, which I haven't brought up, and I'll probably show you next time, because time is marching. But just a couple of things. I was very, very lucky, and I had some gorgeous, gorgeous gifts this year, and I haven't got something from everyone that sent me something. I've just got a few. Um... So one of them was from, I just wanted to show you this. She sent me some other bits as well, but I just wanted to show you this little chap. Oh, his little, his little scarf's got bent up. He was laying on it and it was in the wrong position. I'd have to lay him down and fold it back down again. Um, this is from my lovely Helen, who is Flora Honeypot on Instagram. And she is just a lovely love. Look at those cherries on him. Oh my goodness. She sent me a cherry a stitch marker version as well but oh my god he's just so cute I love him mm. um yes <laughs> so um I sent her a little something and so she sent me something as well which was so nice oh thank you Helen I want to um maybe he'll go on the shelf do you think that'd be good I've just had him sitting on the um little table beside me all Christmas since I've got him but maybe you ought to live up here or something yes so he was really adorable and cute and then my lovely Sam from Etsy makes gifted me these the little darling these were actually my birthday present she was ah oh, she got me a lovely advent calendar she got me a Christmas present and she got me a birthday present I mean she's so kind and lovely they are it's been such a lovely lovely I don't know I'm getting all gushy and weird again but you know I've like had lovely yarn advent calendars so the whole of December's just sort of been a oh a little yarn gift and a little Sam got me the calf kids and calendar so there's sort of little you know little hand creams and lip balm little gifts in there and so all of that and then various different things arrived in the post some were a bit before Christmas and a bit intriguing and some were Christmas and then a couple of things arrived after Christmas I was like the whole of December has been this sort of mass joyful event <laughs> it's been brilliant um yes so she got me these which are from her lovely shop of course so this is her halo sock so I don't know if you can tell because the makeup of that is 55% superwash merino, 20% kid mohair and 20% nylon. So you could, I don't know if you can see if it's picking up on the camera that it's got a little halo to it as well. So isn't that going to make the most warm and lovely socks I think? Um, yeah so that's exciting. The only trouble is I've got this as well and well not the only trouble I was thinking it would make good socks but I've got this as well and I really wanted to pair them up and like make a cowl or something if 
it makes some nice warm socks, it's going to make a nice warm cow, doesn't it? Mm, that might be good. Anyway, so halo sock, fingering weight, four ply fingering weight yarn, colour burnet rose, um, 100 gram skein. And uh, I'll give you the breakdown. But isn't that beautiful? She released some of these before Christmas with sort of matching mohairs or coordinating mohairs and she just had so many gorgeous colourways. And because we'd been to Nottingham and I'd spent some money on yarn, I was like, I really can't get anything else, but oh my gosh, I was so tempted. <laughs> and then the mohair, this is uh, her fairy thread, lace weight. Uh, and the colour is Candy Floss and it's 72% fine kid mohair and 28% silk and there's 20 grams there so there's a 168 metres ooh that means I could hold that double and hold that and make something super squishy. I wonder if that would be enough to make a super squishy cow. Oh, that's exciting. Or my other idea was to make something and not hold them together, but to alternate them to sort of, it's got some fluffy stripes and then sort of wider, thicker, solid, you know, solid yarn. <laughs> Less flimsy yarn, <laughs> stripes. Oh. But I kind of like that big squish idea too. Oh, exciting. Um, yeah, so I shall ponder that. So that's from my lovely Sam. Thank you, Sam. And then the only other one I bought to show you was from my lovely Marcia. <laughs> um, I sent her a little something and I was like, oh, you know, don't worry about sending it back. It, something back you know because she's always she's always so lovely hello by the way Marcia um you're always so lovely and you just leave such gorgeous messages and like you know this whole year you've been always been there with a lovely message and every time you just make me go oh you just make me feel lovely and I thought do you know what that's payment enough isn't it it really is so she didn't need to send me anything but she did and she sent me this. She sent me other things as well, but this is the one of the things. And it's from my gorgeous. Why am I saying everyone's mine today? Nobody's mine. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is from lovely Heather. I know, I took my arm back and you're outraged, aren't you? From Vintage Grey. And I. Th What's that Instagram name? It might be Vintage Grey Handmade on Instagram. I'll pop it down here. If you don't know her shop, oh my goodness, check it out. She hand makes all of these gorgeous vintage star sort of homeware items. She also sort of did embroidered tea towels and she does these beautiful pot holders. She'll do cushions and various different bits. And oh, I followed her before the Instagram days, I think, when it was just blogs. And yeah, I've just admired her for the longest time. She does the most exquisite work. And it was just so adorable. Like, even when you get the package, the packaging is just almost like another gift in itself. There's like, she does these little tags with fabric on and there's just so many little gorgeous touches, some doilies she'd laid in and tied it with baker tine. I've kept all of the packaging as well. It's just, oh, so yes, so Marcia, you couldn't have picked a better thing. You really couldn't have picked a better thing to get me. So yes, this will go with my little deer. I've got a little deer up on um, my wall here. I'm trying to point out that you can't see in my craft room. And that was what made um, Marcia think of it when I did my craft room tour, she saw that. So I'm gonna pop this up there to keep that one company in now. They can sit together and be happy together. I just held it up as I came in and, oh my God, it looks amazing, the two of them up there. So yeah, that is what I will do. And then I can see it. It's like right opposite my eye line. I can see it all the time, which I love. And she also sent me some Christmas decorations and bits and bobs. I just wanted to show you this one. 
the heart, uh, she sent me a lovely heart as well by the same person. And um, yeah, there's my lovely cherries. You're so cute, don't they? I had them on the tree, on the Christmas tree when they came. But I've kept these ones out because I thought I might put these up here as well somewhere. Maybe up on my shelf or I don't know. But yeah. Oh, perfect. So thank you so much and thank you to everyone that sent me something. I got some more nice cherries as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> some lovely glittery ones that I haven't shown. It's not because it's not also very much appreciated and absolutely gorgeous and lovely. I just, you know, don't want to show everything and talk about it too long and go on about it too long. But oh my God, you make me feel so, so happy. And um, yeah. Sorry, I hope this isn't too much, but I'm happy today. What can I tell you? <laughs> so let's talk about the bullet journaling stuff. If you're interested in that. Um, I know some people like it. I'm sure a lot of people aren't interested, but um, bullet journaling very briefly, because I don't actually really do much bullet journaling, even though that's what I call it. Um, it's a particular system, it's designed by a particular person that came up with it and it's a way of combining sort of your diary, as in your appointments diary, your scheduling, your life type of diary, your journaling, these are my thoughts on today type diary, your like to-do lists of things you want to do and also collections they call it, your kind of you know, you've got a list of books you want to read or films that you want to watch or I don't know, whatever, you know, and tracking things like, oh, you know, how many times today exercises me, I want to make, keep a track of all that. And it's a way of sort of keeping all that in order, just using a pen and a notebook. That's all you need to use the system. But of course, people being people, they get into lovely stationery and, oh, actually, how could I make... You know, I've got a list of books I want to read. Maybe I'll draw some books in the corner or I'll pretty it up. And that's that's the bit that really lures me in. Because the kind of organising my life bit I do on the computer, I've got, you know, we use the uh, online computer thing. No, what am I talking about? The online diary thing. So we can keep track of things that way. And I've got like an, you know, uh, electronic to-do list and it syncs on all my devices. So I feel like I'm kind of sorted on that front. But it doesn't... You can, there's never anywhere to put those book lists in those sort of things and there's never anywhere to put that keeping track of, oh, actually, haven't been sleeping great lately, I wonder why that is. Oh yeah, it's because, you know, you've been eating like rubbish for two weeks. So, you know, just a little bit of maybe health and fitness stuff, whatever, it's whatever you want it to be and it's a chance to have some nice stationery and it's a chance to sort of mess about with... <laughs> a bit of doodling if you want to or just a little bit of creativity in a, a more I hesitate to use the word artistic because I'm not sure that <laughs> that's stretching it a bit for me but you know having said that I do again if you follow me on Instagram you might have seen I do do these like little cover sheets for each month and I've this past year I've really enjoyed just taking time on doing that like the yeah it's sort of become almost like a little treat that each month I just make a little bit of time to spend on sort of making this page and then you know I just quickly bash the you know the information in for the other pages that I actually want to use but yeah it's it's become quite a nice little thing to do actually so that's been quite nice so I want to carry that on um what was I going to show you? The main thing I wanted to show you, this is my old bullet journal for this year. Firstly, I do goals for each month. I don't do resolutions, but I do just do a sort of things of, oh, what would it be nice to achieve this year? Like, oh, maybe this pattern's been sitting around. I really must get that out this year. And, you know, the usual things about, oh, I really must eat better and exercise more. And, or perhaps I want to decorate a room in the house. So that will sort of just bigger things that it's easier to lose track of if you're not careful. Things like I've got in here, you know, do more sewing. 
it's very non-specific but it's a general thing I must sort of keep in mind I do want to get back and do a bit more sewing in here but I've also noticed when I go back and look at what I've actually done is a lot of the things I haven't done I have about half and half I'd say half I've done and half I haven't done and if you sort of bear in mind the fact that every month when I set up my you know month of the year I set myself some little monthly goals again just not as a oh my god this absolutely must be done this month but just as a way to keep on track you know you never do anything unless you sort of plan the time to actually do it in do you so like if I want to do more sewing then I need to sort of go oh well actually that's a day I could use to do some sewing in so you know so I keep checking back in here every month to keep it on track and obviously there's some of these things I've avoided doing <laughs> rather than so maybe I'd, maybe they're not actually a goal I don't know you know some things like make sure you keep exercising all year yeah okay that didn't happen but it's still something that's important to keep trying to do so that will stay in there but other things I've got in here like take more DSLR pictures didn't really happen maybe maybe I don't maybe I'm not that fussed about that then if I haven't made an effort to make that happen maybe I'm really not that bothered about it as I think I am or thought I was anyway so apart from that minor epiphany <laughs> of sorts um, my yarn stash, this is what I actually wanted to talk about. Um, so I do this every year. Again, some people don't like the idea of, you know, why would you limit what you buy? That's Where's the fun in that? And for me, it isn't really about that as such, because this is what I brought. And as you can see, there's plenty of it. But what I don't want to do is always be buying more than I use. So let's say in simple numbers if I always bought 10 balls of yarn but every year I only used eight of them it's not going to take long before I've got you know my yarn stash is just growing and growing and growing and there's kind of I've run out of space for it basically so I'm quite happy to have a stash as you can see I have lots of stash I like having a stash that's good what I don't want to be is just you know oh now I've got more stash I've got to get rid of that shelf to put it in and oh now I've got even more stash I've got to get rid of you know and it's just pointless because the other thing that happens that I don't like is I'll have gorgeous yarns sitting on there and they'll sit there for a couple of years and I'll pull them out again and think I love this when I bought it I'm a bit ambivalent about it now what a waste if I could have just used it when I had it that would have made me happier than it does to feel like I guess I could use it up but it doesn't excite me to use it now so I don't like that so I just want to just make sure that I'm staying in balance I suppose and also the space is an issue I do need to keep tabs on things because I've only got a limited space and I can't go beyond that so yeah so this year I'm glad to say that I've just skirted through on the right side of the line again which is what I did last year all these these are all little balls the different colors are each different month that I've added and each ball represents 50 grams of yarn um, so this is how much I brought and added to my big pile after on scales to sort of show me comparing them that's what that's supposed to illustrate and then this is how much I've used up and as you can see this pile is just about bigger it goes right up to a peak up here so it looks like it's quite significantly bigger but the numbers aren't actually that different so I used up in total over 35,000 yards 35,593 yards I use so let's say 35,500 yards that I used in making things and then I bought 34,269 yards <laughs> so let's say 34,000 yards so I used 35,500 but I bought 34,000 so I'm pretty much replenishing but I'm not going over <laughs> small victory yeah the gram sounds a bit better 
I used up 12,000 grams, but I only bought 9,000 grams. That sounds a little bit better, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, I just like to do it. So, at the beginning of the year, I pick a word. Um, I've been doing that for a little while, the kind of word of the year thing. I just find that really works for me. I find it's really helpful. Um, yeah, it's a very vague thing, isn't it? You sort of choose a word. I'm sure you've heard of the idea. You choose a word and it kind of sums up where you want to be heading this year. And I thought I would choose a word and then by February I would have just forgot about it, never think about it again. But actually, it just, I don't know, I do keep going back to it. Maybe because I've got the bullet journal and it's actually written down. But I do sort of go back to it now. No, you know. This is what I'll keep in mind, you know. So yeah, I find it helpful. And this year my word is simple. So I finally caught up with the rest of the world and got on the kind of less is more and I don't know. Our lives are so busy, there's so much in them all the time that you just really crave some, to carve out some space to sort of think and enjoy things and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And, and and like physically less stuff you know just the clutter around it's always been a bit of an issue because I'm I think I'm a natural hoarder at heart but my head wants me to be a minimalist you know <laughs> clean surfaces kind of person and I think those two bits of me are always fighting but just I don't know I think I've really sort of plugged into that more I just don't need so much stuff physically I just don't need so many things happening I just I just need less in my life and also from a you know an environmental point of view just using like I was saying earlier about using less and wasting less and you know I know I almost chose less as my word because that sort of came into it as well but yeah so it's all about that I was actually very inspired by I've been watching um lovely gainer um who is Tales from Cuckoo Land. Is that right? I'll pop it down here. Every time I say something, I then think, I'm wrong. I've, I've said the wrong thing. Yeah, and she, I'd, I'd watched one of her, I don't know, some vlogging she'd done before Christmas, before the Vlogmas stuff. And I really enjoyed that. So I went back and watched from the beginning. And in one of the earlier episodes, she was sort of saying about that. I think less was actually her word. And she was saying about that. And I was like, oh, my goodness, everything you're saying sounds like music to my ears. This is perfect. And also she's very into that, um, you know, not using single use plastic and things. So it was just I just found her at just that moment when I needed to find her. And she was just talking my language. And so, yeah, so I found that very inspiring. So that's definitely what I want to focus on this year. I've got some, I did come up with some goals, some sort of general aims of things to keep in mind and just, and some things I would like to do. I haven't got that many goals this year because of the whole, not sure how much time I'll have to get actual practical, productive stuff done. So it's going to force a little bit of a slowing down and change. But, I'm, you know, after the initial, ah, oh, how's that going to work? I'm like, no, actually, I think I'm ready for that. I think I'm ready for a change. I think something that's forcing me to do something different is probably what I need right now. So so that's good. And then this is this year's how I'm going to keep track of my yarn in and out this year. So I'm going to colour these. I've done it as like sh um, shelves in the yarn shop. And I'm going to colour these balls in and fill them up as I you know, buy things and use things up and I've got a little monthly thing here so I can write down how much it is each month so I remember what I'm doing. So yeah, as as my yarn gets used up and as I buy it, I shall be filling these shells with lots of lovely colour. So that idea kind of pleased me. Um, got a few, um, you know, it'd be nice to do so many podcasts and it'd be nice to do so many blogs and I've put down a thing for doing Vlogmas as well, but I really enjoyed doing Vlogmas this year. I really loved it, and I know some of you really loved it. I'm sure a lot of people that watch Vlogmas won't necessarily be watching the regular podcast, but I know that some of you that watch the podcast will watch that. So I really enjoyed doing it. 
on the other hand, like I've shown you two years worth of Christmases now, so if I did a third one, I'd literally be going, yeah, we've seen this, we've seen this. <laughs> and I know there's some comfort in some repetition, but I'm like, I literally got nothing else of interest to show you, I'm sure, so I don't know. So we'll see how it goes. Um, here's my little list of books I want to read. Um, I used to read an awful lot, and now I hardly read at all. I listen to quite a few audio books, but I want to actually physically read some more books. It's, you know, especially at night in bed, it's the best way to wind down and get off to sleep. So it's not a massive amount there because I don't think I'll read much before I drop off, but it would be nice to get some read. You notice none of them have got any titles in yet, so I need to actually come up with some ideas of something I want to read. But there's that. I do a little, this is quite a bullet journal thing, a year at the glance thing. Um, I think the idea is if you are writing out what you are doing when, it's more likely to stay in your mind and you'll remember what you're doing. I'm not sure that actually works for me. But it is a good, like, at a glance, at a glance guide to, like, when the school holidays are, when birthdays are coming up, you know, how many you've got coming up in a month and things like that. Like, oh, June is hideous. We've got eight birthdays in June plus it's Father's Day I've also put in there little yarn balls for yarn festivals that I think I might possibly go to because <laughs> important um, so that's about it in there really that um, isn't, doesn't come under just monthly thing and then I did this is my January very proud of this I think this is one of my favourite ones that I've done. It's actually got doodles that don't look hideous. Achievement. Mm. So yeah, I quite like that. I'm only showing you because I'm pleased with that one. I've done loads of rubbish. I'm not showing you that. So I do a little, those dates that are in that year, I just put sort of like the month's important dates. Let's not show you that because that's actual people's birthdays and such things. So those, some dates there. See, I've put effort into this one. I've actually done all the doodles. I don't normally do that. It's only because it's been Christmas and I had time to faff around with it. I've got my goals for the month or things I'd quite like to focus on. This podcast is on the list, so that's good. That's a tick. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. Feels like I'm only just starting and we're already, what is it, in the ninth now? Already feels like we're a good chunk through January, and I'm only just going, right, let's get started. <laughs> Never mind. And then I've got two trackers in here. One is where I keep track of um, a sort of eating thing that I'm doing, and then this one is just whether I did that eating thing, and things like, you know, did I drink plenty of water? Did I go out and walk the dog, did I do any other exercise, did I go to bed at a reasonable time, you know, and I've got like a little mood tracker in there, that's a very popular bullet journal thing, all of these trackers, they have lots of trackers for loads of different things, like anything you think of that, um, yeah, so I've got just a little mood tracker of if I'm feeling more up or more down and, and if that relates to anything else I've been doing or not doing, and then this one is just a completed tasks. So this is like a, um, what's the word? A perspective thing, changing your perspective thing. I'm not sure I need this anymore because I've been doing it for a few years, but I've kept it in for now. So instead of having a to-do list, which is a whole list of things that you've got done, and then if you don't get them done, it makes you feel bad, have a list of things that you've done. So like, oh, I did this today check me out and oh I did that and that so that's that's three things there and you get a list and you're like this is all stuff I've achieved so it's just getting you to think a bit differently because what I would find I would always worry that I wasn't getting you know I didn't get all these things done on this list and most of the time it was actually because something happened that was more important or had to be done more urgently and I dealt with that instead and so some other stuff just fell down the list so I started to go well no I have done stuff it just wasn't all right it wasn't necessarily the stuff I'd planned to do but that doesn't mean I didn't achieve anything 
so I, so I just sort of make a note of, you know, stuff I've done in there, just so I can look back on it and go, everything's empty deliberately at the moment, I would just say. Also, I haven't done anything, but... Um, <laughs> and then this is like a gratitude log, that's another bullet journal thing, just a little... Um, the idea being, if you write down things that you're grateful for, you're generally, you know, feel a bit happier with your lot. I just changed it to just happy moments, just things that I've enjoyed that month, just things that have made me smile or been nice. I, there's quite a lot I haven't put in here yet, because so I've just been waiting to show you. But I can add some of those in now, because I've been enjoying myself so far. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's about it really. That's about all the pages I do. I sometimes sort of put some little notes in there about like, oh, I didn't do this because of that and I want to change, you know, sort of ideas like about the pages. Oh, actually, this layout doesn't work. I'll perhaps try this way next time or something. Just things I might remember for the next month's layout or goals I want to add in to next time or something. So, yeah, there you go. That's how I use mine. It's like I said, I don't do a lot of the classic bullet journal things because I kind of do that another way. Um, but the beauty of it is that you can make it whatever you want it to be, ultimately. And now I've got into the habit of using it, you know, it's even more useful because I do refer back to it and then I remember things a bit better. Well, a bit better. My memory has been absolutely diabolical lately. I think it's the time of life. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Too much information. I'll leave it there. I'm just looking at these numbers and it's got really long so I don't know perhaps try and edit it down a bit or maybe I'll chop some off out or maybe I'll just leave it because you can just you didn't have to stick around for this bit if you didn't want to did you so um yes but if you did thank you very much for staying with me um thank you for watching at all or trying it out if you are new and you've managed to make it through this far wow thank you um <laughs> Yes, that's it. I will leave it there. I will let you go and get on with your lives and um, I will see you next time. Okay, bye.